All right. So, well, let's jump right in. Many markets to go over. Uh, markets are really moving today with NFP here in the U.S. So before we get started, for those that are new to the sessions, anybody really new to these sessions? FX Street has been putting on webinars for many, many, many years. Um, I think I've been a part of the webinars with FX Street pretty much from the beginning. I don't remember how many years it's been now, but it's been many. They are one of the pioneers in this, which is great. And um, okay, so for those that are new, and here's why I asked the question. So we use a very specific rule-based strategy here, all around supply and demand. And um, so I started on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange uh, many years ago, back in the mid-90s, and in the heyday of floor trading, right before screen-based trading. And what I trained my eye to do by watching inst by facilitating institutional order flow, that was my, uh, my job there in the beginning, was to facilitate institutional order flow. I was able to see where banks and major financial institutions, the big money was buying and selling in markets. To make a long story short, what that picture looks like, the picture of real demand and real supply, uh, what I saw early on is very different from what most people look at. Um, very different from con anything conventional technical analysis. We don't use moving averages, indicators, oscillators, any of those historical chart patterns or any of that stuff, we focused on one thing and one thing only, answering two questions. Where is the market going to turn and where is it going to go? We look for price levels where objectively supply exceeds demand or demand exceeds supply. In other words, where the smart money, the big money is buying and selling, what do those, foot, what do those footprints look like? What you'll see is they always look the same. And um, so that's what we do here, and that's what we'll do today. Today will be uh, less lesson-based, uh, like like we have done uh, in the recent past, and more going through market after market after market. I have a whole set of markets here that I can run through, um, but if you have a market you want me to jump to, just let me know, and I'm uh, we should be able to get to it. I do a uh, a live trading and analysis session every morning for people in uh, uh, the group at Online Trading Academy. And um, so we'll run through some of those. We will certainly start with the Forex markets since we're uh, with FX Street here today. And uh, But it doesn't mean we need to stay there. Okay. Um, I often have positions on in some of these markets. I think I have two positions on at the moment, uh, possibly three. So I'll always let you know that. And um, let's dive in. Let's move forward. So we are looking at multiple time frames of the U.S. dollar. Let me one second here, and I'm just going to clean up the sound just a touch. One second. There we go. That should be better. All right. Yeah, great to see you. Great to see everybody. And uh, before I go too far, let me do this. Here's my email address. If you have any questions beyond the webinar today, just feel free to send me an email. There it is. Sam.Sidon at Trading Academy. All right. Let's look at the dollar and... You know, a lot of people have specific time frames that they look at. You have to be very careful with that. When you're too rigid with that, you're going to miss a lot of things. Okay? These are all just different sort of x-ray screenshots of, of one market. Just like a doctor takes multiple x-ray pictures of one body part. We do the same thing here. We look at the dollar. For those of you that have been in our sessions uh, for, for years, here's, the, here's levels that we've had on our workspace for quite a long time. And all that's happened over the past uh, few weeks is prices come down to our demand zone. 
bounced up. We're now back down here. We would expect prices to um, uh, expect another bounce out of this area. This level, however, is in the middle, kind of in the white space. So ultimately, uh, the dollar can go lower. But uh, but again, we're, we just keep touching this demand zone notice. So uh, that's why I'm suggesting that you know prices can very easily turn higher from here again. The fact that price just keeps touching this level and turning higher tells us that there's uh, likely a big supply demand imbalance here on the demand side, right? In other words, there's so much demand, price can't even get in the level. Having said that, now we have some context as we go down a couple time frames. So we're looking at a four hour chart now, and not that there's anything magical or important about the uh, four hour chart, it just happens to be the time frame right now that's helping us see uh, where you know big banks and financial institutions are, are buying and selling. So these are levels that we've had in for the, the group uh, for the morning sessions that I do. There's our supply, uh, there's our demand. I believe we went over the supply zone the last time we were together here in FX Street. We're just looking at the dollar index right now, Isa. Um, yeah, we'll look at some of those others. Uh, the stock's 15, all those, sure, we can, we can look at those. Remind me if I forget towards the end. So while price turned at our levels nicely, these are not fresh levels anymore. So the high probability turning points now move to this demand zone down here at 96.55 and this supply zone up here at 98.30, okay? If you're trading the Euro or really any of the majors against the dollar, these are key levels. If I change this to the Euro, obviously this chart's gonna look just opposite of what you see here because this is the dollar index, the Euro takes up the biggest uh, slice of that weighted pie, right? Okay. So the next levels we were, will be focused on here are these levels we had, they worked great, but, but again, don't, um, we need to be kind of done with them now, right? So what does that tell us about the markets and trading going forward in, in the FX markets? You're probably likely to see quite a bit of movement. Why? Because the dollar uh, levels are, uh, current levels are not fresh. Okay, so we'll stick with the 96.55 on the downside and 98.30 on, on the upside. So what does that tell us about the upcoming range in these markets? It's likely to be a very, a bigger range. A lot of people trade options. Anybody trade options in our group? Give you a little, kind of little, little thought here on, on options. Anybody trade options? Okay, not a lot of options people. That's okay. We can stick to, we'll stick to Forex. My, my point was going to be volatility, right? Volatility is a very, very important to a lot of people. Um, but what everybody looks at to determine what vol volatility is, um, you know, they, they, they look at things like, um, you know, the things like the VIX and all, all the different, you know, ways to look at volatility, volatility index, right? Things like that. And, and they make buy and sell decisions and specifically strategy, which strategy to use type decisions based on where volatility is, what the number is. And um, things like, you know, and I would also use the argument, uh, anybody use average true range? Anybody use average true range for, to place your stops or things like that? Anyway, here's why I would stay away from all that stuff and, and offer a, 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 a perhaps a different way to look at it. Average true range measures whatever range you, you set the indicator at, right? Okay, it'll average the, the range of the last X number of periods or candles. Just like volatility is looking back and saying, okay, here's what, here's, here's what volatility is. Well, what do we care about most? What volatility is or what it's going to be? What the average true range was or what it's going to be? Both of those questions and more are answered with our fresh supply and demand zones here. So given that the distance now between our fresh demand and fresh supply levels is really big, what's about to happen to volatility? What's about to happen to the average, to the range? See my point? So, 
right? You always want to be kind of, you always want to, oh, right? Everything's got to be forward thinking. Everything in your analysis, right? Everything that comes into your decision making process needs to directly answer those two questions that I started with. Where's price going to go? Turn and where's it going to go? All right, so that's the that's the dollar. Now that we've done that, we can now look at other markets against the dollar. So give me just a second here, and I'll pull those up. Uh, why don't we start with the Aussie dollar? We'll look at the futures, and then we'll look at the spot. Okay, as you can see, the Aussie dollar is coming. So we're looking at the Aussie dollar futures right now. And we're going to start with uh, this, this four-hour chart here. So here's a level that we had in our sessions. It's uh, working out fine. But notice above, specifically 69.50 to 69.75. That's 69.50 to 69.75. We have a uh, supply zone up here. Okay, Given that uh, the demand level here is not fresh anymore. This one up here could have a nice profit zone with it. Now, um, knowing where the dollar is likely to turn and where the dollar is likely to go will certainly help this position. If um, so, make sure you know you you want you know you look at the dollar and all that. Um, if if you're going to take this, and of course, make sure you're okay with the risk and and all that. And let's go to Another chart, another, um, let's go to this chart right here. So again, given that we have supply right up here in the 6950 area, the question then is, so, so that helps us answer the question, where is price likely to turn? To answer the second question, where is price likely to go? We have to find demand. So where's the opposing demand zone? For that, we can take a look here, um, at another time frame where some levels around 6,800, 68 even show up nicely and you have two levels on top of each other. So there's that 69.50. Uh, it's really like more like 55, really like 55 to 65. And then, boy, if you can get a stop up at 90, that would be great. Um, but if that's too much risk, then obviously don't take that or don't do that. We have a nice profit zone down to 67.98 or, or call it 6,800. And obviously the way that we use profit targets, if you've been in some of my sessions where we go over how to choose profit targets, uh, it's typically ideal to get out just before that opposing level. Does that make sense? All right, so that is the Aussie dollar. And then if we look at the spot market, right, the, the, the levels are right identical. So you've got your levels right up here. Why don't we take a look at, um, let's take a look at the pound. Here we're going to look at the daily chart and the four hour chart. So uh, this is a level that's been working for us pretty good in, uh, in the live sessions. So we're looking at daily chart of the pound and we're looking at the futures. One, I can, is it better if I look at the spot or the futures? I really don't care. It doesn't matter. Really up to you. Um, yeah, whatever works. You want the spot? We can do that. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so there's that level right there. We'll take it right at the origin of the drop, which is right in there. Okay. So there's your numbers. Uh, so we have touched this level already. Price is almost back to that level. Because the first time price went into that level, it barely touched that level and fell pretty good. I know this doesn't look like a big drop, but this is a daily chart. That's a, that's a pretty big move. Because of that, how, how shallow price went into the level, um, we would be comfortable taking a uh, the, the likelihood of price turning prices turning again in this area is high. Does that make sense? Okay. 
because typically you don't want to you don't want to you know sell or you don't want to take action uh, another entry into a level after it's been there but what what most people do is they they look at the touch count they say oh it's been to that level you know this many times and uh therefore want to take it i don't want to take it if you want to keep it more objective to supply and demand then um focus on how deep price is going into the levels does that make sense i don't care if price goes into a level you know four five six times if it's just touching the level and turning then you know that tells you there's there's still a big supply demand imbalance there right likely okay so watch that level that's the daily let's also go take a look at the uh, four hour now i think you're going to see not too far above current oh yeah i guess this one's kind of way up there never mind that one's too far to uh that one's too far to worry about all right, let's go over to the Japanese yen. And there it is. Um, and we can just, let's start with the futures, and then we'll move over to the spot if we need to. Okay. So again, just for some big picture context, there's the, uh, there's the daily chart, and there's the, demand zone on the daily we're far from that now but just note that price can't even get to that level so if and when we do get down to that area um that looks like a that looks like a great level very likely before the next time we're together the yen will either come down to this demand zone of 91.65 down to 91.50 uh, or you can see that looks like a, a pretty good level there. Here it is. Or it will rally up to this level here that I'll show you. Um, that one. So up around 93.40 to 93.60. We have a supply zone up there. Again, price is in the middle, so I don't want to spend too much time here. All right. And then, of course, with any of these, you know, we want to watch the dollar. I want to make sure that we watch... The dollar. Let's look at another uh, another market. How about how about we look at the euro yen? So here it is, and we spent time on this. I believe the last time we were together. Um, anybody take our supply zone here in euro yen from our last session? Those that have been with us. Um, this level's worked out pretty well. We do have some demand just below. So, um, but what's happening now is you're seeing price base sideways. So one likely scenario is price drops out of this level. We'll then be left with a supply, a new supply level here, uh, which is a good thing if you're short this market. Okay. Uh, any other markets you want to, any other FX markets you want to take a look at before we move on to something else? There are plenty of markets to look at. Aussie yen, sure, we can take a look at that. Okay. So, if you're new to trading or new to charting and all this, new to supply and demand, it's always a good idea to start with the bigger time frames, like you know the, this this weekly chart down here in the lower right corner, just to just to glance at it and say, right, look, are we closer to demand, closer to supply, and so on. You know, then to take a look at the you know the daily, work your way down. You know, when I do this, I see you know we've got some fresh demand down here, we've got some fresh supply up in here. Um, so we're we're not super close to either of them. That tells me that you know what I can look for both buying and selling opportunities here. Okay. So now let's start to do that, um, moving out to some little bit bigger time frames. And the way that we do this is we start with current price. We go down and left without cutting through candles. Again, no cutting through candles. 
and we keep going left and so till we see the picture or pattern that represents fresh demand well we have one right here uh, just gonna look at that level on another time frame just to make sure uh, it's okay and it's not so I'm glad I did that so let's go down here So there's that. All right, so we have some demand down here, which also lines up with some supply just to the left. That's a good thing. Now, as far as the supply side of everything goes, we have to look above this high to find supply if we're sticking to our rules. And when we do that, we see we have a level sitting right up here. Um, this one right there. Okay. Yeah, John, you can, you know, you can do it by hand. You can, you know, use a service or what have you. You can see right now prices in the middle. So uh, probably not something we want to, you know, we don't really want to do anything in here. Remember you have supply, demand, and then what you'll see is most of the trading activity here is in the middle. All right. And we don't want to do anything in the middle. Let me explain. Again, this is more for people that are kind of new to the new to the sessions. This. Okay. So we have, uh, and I would actually do it like this. No, we're not going to do this with every opportunity. So let me let me do this. Watch, this will all make sense in just a second. This is really just to help you understand it. That and then One more here and then I'll explain this. So when it comes to supply and demand, there's that one, that one, okay. And this has to come down to here. Right, so a market can be in one of three states. It can be near, you know, in an area where there's relative balance, okay, not equilibrium. A lot of people say equilibrium. It's not equilibrium. It's never equal. It's always a an unbalanced equation that takes a certain period of time to play out. But it can, it can be at a price level, you know, where there's relative balance when it comes to supply and demand. That's the white space in the middle here. It could be up at a price point where supply greatly exceeds demand, that would be up here, specifically up here at the top. Or it could be at a price point down below where uh, objectively demand greatly exceeds supply. Understand that anytime prices come out to these levels where you know demand or supply, what's, what's actually going on there? It's very important that you understand just the, the raw basics of this. I mean, at supply, what's the definition of supply? Competition to sell, right? Competition to sell. Down at demand, there's competition to buy. Understand how this works. This competition to buy pushes or forces price back to the middle. All the competition to sell up here without enough demand forces price back down to the middle which is obviously why price spends most of its time in this middle area in any market, right? Any, any, anything. Does that make sense? So obviously price is going to spend most of its time relatively in the middle, but do we have trading opportunity in the middle? 
What do we want to do in the middle? Price probably spends 95% of its time generally in the middle. But what do we want to do there? Nothing. Exactly. The, the very, you know, little time the price gets out to those key areas, that's when we want to take action. Okay. And by the way, for those who are new to the sessions, you know, what we're talking about here is equally applicable in any market, right? Stocks, futures, Forex, options, bonds, real estate, cryptocurrency, doesn't matter. It's everything we're talking about with the strategy is also uh, equally applicable for any financial purpose, whether it's daily uh, income trading, weekly income trading, or building and protecting that longer term wealth. Does that make sense? We apply the same simple rules equally. All right. So now why draw this on this chart? Because while your brains, while your eyes are always going to see the candles, your brain needs to be able to process this picture. Now, if this seems too simple, and um, does this seem too simple, the way I explain it, what I'm showing you here? And sometimes I feel like, you know, it, it sounds too simple. And it's okay. You know, it's okay. Uh, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Um, but, yeah, so here, here it is, right? And I know some of you have been in these sessions for a long time, so you, you see how this works. But I would argue that the rules... For, for doing this, playing the supply demand you know, uh, equation the right way, um, are very simple. But here's the catch. Like anything in life, if something seems too good to be true, it usually is. While the rules for the strategy are very simple, okay, um, the actual act of doing it is very challenging. That's where the challenge comes in. Right? And let me explain why. When price comes down to, when price goes up to supply, what do you think the news is going to be? Right? You think the news is ever bad when price comes up here? No, it's really good. And for price to get up to supply where we want to sell, what is the trend going to be? It's going to be up. Does anybody ever want to sell in an uptrend? No. How about when price comes down to demand? Right? Here's our dollar from our last session right here. Take a look. See how price came down to our demand zone? And we talked about this the last time we were together. Downtrend to our demand zone. Very few people are going to want to buy there. The news is never good when price comes down to demand. But it worked perfect. It went right to our, our target and supply zone like we thought, right? And let me ask you this. Would anybody be a little nervous buying this or any market when price comes down to demand like that? Would you be a little nervous pushing the buy button? Anybody? Yeah, a lot of people would. See, and there's the there's another there's another catch. Think about it. I would argue, and I've been doing this a long time, but everybody's trained to do this backwards. Okay, the fact that you know so many people are nervous buying down here, you're only nervous because this is a financial market. What if I told you? That this is not the dollar or the pound or the yen or anything else, but instead, this is the um, this is the McLaren. Everybody know the McLaren, the car. I think they start around three hundred thousand, maybe go up to I don't know. There's million dollar McLarens, I think. Um, so this is the market for the McLaren, and um, and right here on this day, uh, they happen to be on sale, and. They're on sale for $50,000, and there's only three left, and they're, uh, they're right down the street. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit and listen to the rest of this webinar, or are you going to drop your headset and go run and buy the cars? Right? Normally $500,000 on sale for $50,000, there's only three left. Right? Yeah. And look at how you're probably excited about that, and it's not even a real story. You see my point? Okay. We all know how to play supply and demand, wholesale, retail, the right way. But when it comes to the financial markets, most people play it backwards. Look, here, here's a big point. There is a reason why banks, financial institutions, 
do so well and make so much money and everybody else doesn't. Okay. Anybody anybody know the failure rate of a of a of a self-directed trader? Yeah, we're going to find more supply demand zones in a minute. What are the, you know, what's what's the success rate or or failure rate of a of a self-directed active trader? Yeah, probably not. It's not good, right? I don't think any of us know the exact number. I don't, but but it's not good. So how about here's a thought. Stop doing what everybody else does, which is thinking like a retail novice trader or investor, and start thinking like a professional. Does that make sense? If we know what 90% of the people do that fail, why not just stop doing that and do what the 5 or 10% do? When I started on the, I started on the professional side of the business um, back on the trading floor, and I'll never forget when I when I started. One of the things I was excited about was I like, wow, I'm going to learn the big Wall Street secret. I'm going to learn why Wall Street makes so much money and everybody else doesn't. Well, I learned it, and it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not that, it's not a big secret at all. What the professional bank, financial institution, consistently profitable market speculator knows and acts upon that everybody else doesn't is simply this. How you make money buying and selling anything in life is exactly how you make money buying and selling in the financial markets. Does that make sense? It's the simple wholesale retail game, whatever you want to call it, however you want to color it, and all that. Someone, someone, tell me a big bank, a big trading, big trading firm, or big huge institution. Just name one. It doesn't matter which one. All right, Barclays. Let's go with Barclays. Okay. Now, what about a what about a big retail store around the world? Name someone. Name a big retail store around the world. There's the obviously, you know, there's the the biggest one, which is Amazon, right? And then you've got all the others like Walmart and, and Big Bazaar and all the and all those others, right? Um, Tesco in the UK. But let me ask you this. What's the difference between Barclays Bank and Amazon or any of those big retailers? Walmart, what's the big difference between the big bank and the big retailers around the world? What's what's the difference? Right? It's just yeah, it's just it's just the products they they buy and sell. Think about how both groups make money. How does Barclays Bank make money? And how does Walmart, the big retailer in the United States, make money? They they're good at two things. What are the two things that they're good at? And then we're gonna look at the bond market. They're good at buying at wholesale and selling at retail. Right? What's the second thing they both have to be good at? Both the bank and Walmart or Amazon. What's the second thing they have to be good at? All right, they're good at wholesale, buying and wholesale, selling and retail. What's the second thing they need to be good at? Advertising. Yes, Larry. Marketing. They both have to be good at that. Right. Amazon, Walmart, Tesco, Big Bazaar, any of them, they, they buy the toothpaste at this price and they mark it up and sell it at that price. Barclays gets the bonds and stocks and all the financial products at this price, marks them up and sells them to the public at that price. There's no difference in the business. You follow me? So the more that you could start, and, and the reason why am I saying all this? Because a lot of people come into the trading world, you know, a lot of average people jump into the trading world, and they think that in order to be successful, you need to be this walking calculator and this I need to go to some Ivy school, Ivy League school, and know everything there is about to, about the economy and all this other stuff. Does that make sense? It's it's not it's not that at all. It's just you know buying and wholesale, selling retail, and and I be able to identify what those pictures look like on a price chart. Supply and demand, demand wholesale, supply retail. All right, let's look at the bond market. Let's start with the thirty year. So, and we're going to look at uh, this time frame right here. So, uh, I have a position on, a short position on in this market. Um, and I can actually walk you through that one specifically. There it is. 
So um, yesterday, prices rallied into this supply zone, barely got up there, okay? took a short position, and now prices are starting to fall. Um, and there's a nice profit zone in here. Demand is down here. But let's get a little more specific with this whole supply demand concept. Right? Because again, the goal is to make sure that every um, decision to make answers those two questions. Where is price going to turn? Where is it going to go? Let's look at this supply zone. So price was trading here for a short period of time. And all of a sudden, price fell. There was a gap down in price. Why did that happen? The only reason why that can happen is because supply exceeded demand here. Right here specifically, where I'm pointing, there was buying and selling going on, and all of a sudden, the last buy order was filled at that price, and there were no more buyers. Therefore, all that competition to sell, because there were still sellers left over, forces price down to a price point where you can find more buyers to fill those orders. So we get that gap. But that leaves the footprint that we're looking for that tells us supply greatly exceeds demand up here. Therefore, we follow our rules and wrap our two lines around this level, creating that supply zone or sell zone. Another word for supply, retail prices. And we carry that level forward. Prices fell all the way down to here before making their way back up to supply. What does that tell us? Well, the fact that prices came all the way down to here tells us that, that there, there can't be much demand above this price. If there was, price never would have made it to this price, right? Every significant, at this point down here, every significant buy order above this price was filled. They had to be. Otherwise, price couldn't get down here. Then price comes up to this level uh, where I took a short position and, and, and uh, maybe others did too in the, in the morning session. And this is where you need to be, a, a, you know, that, that uh, professional, uh, you have to have that professional mindset. And, and here's something I would suggest that you do. When, it's, when you're ready to buy and sell in a market, like for me up here, I was ready to sell and sold. As you're doing that, okay, or getting ready to do it, ask yourself this question. Who are you selling to? Do you think Walmart knows who they're selling to? Do you think Barclays knows who they're selling to? Do you think both of those companies know who they're buying from? You bet they do. They know a lot about the person on the other side of their transactions, and they're trying to get the best deal they can. Does that make sense? So up here, you ask yourself one simple question. Who are you selling to? And make sure you're selling to someone who is making two mistakes that every you know, novice trader makes. Number one, are you selling to a buyer who's buying after a rally in price? Obviously here, the answer is yes. And, and why is that important? Because if you're consistently buying after a rally in price in any market, doesn't even forget that even if it's not the financial markets, if you're just consistently buying after prices go up, can you make money doing that consistently? Is that a smart thing to do? You ever walk in a, you ever walk in a car dealership and say, oh, I, I, I know that car is only $30,000, but I love it so much I want to pay you 40000 for it. You ever go to the grocery store and say, I know the ice cream is only $2, but you don't understand. I love it so much. Can I pay you $5 for it? Do you ever do that? Of course you don't. So why do people do it in the financial markets? Because they're trained and conditioned to do this and think this backwards, right? Question number two. It, when you're selling here, is the buyer on the other side of your trade buying at a price level where supply exceeds demand? Okay. Uh, according to the chart, the answer was yes. So someone who buys after a rally in price and into a price level where banks are selling, I'm comfortable uh, selling to that person and betting on a downside move. Does that make sense? Of course, you need to be completely comfortable with the risk and the reward. And if you are, then you take the trade like a robot. Another way to say this, 
I just sold at retail prices to people who are trained and conditioned to buy at retail prices. Does that make sense? Is that how Barclays Bank makes their money? Is that how Walmart makes their money? Now, think about this. Now let's get ourselves in the mindset of the retail trader. What is the retail trader thinking? Okay, wait a second. The most important thing is to buy in an uptrend. Okay, I'm doing that because the trend is up here. Um, the, the news is good, so I feel good about buying. So that's probably going on here. You follow me? Let me look at these indicators or oscillators, some of these price patterns. Those are all pointing up. You see my point? Okay. So the goal, if you're not where you want to be or successful, the goal is to stop thinking and acting like a retail trader and start thinking and acting like a professional. Does that make sense? And the good news is everybody, there's no one that doesn't understand um, how to buy it wholesale and sell at retail. Right? All I'm trying to do is help you see that on a price chart. We're looking at uh, the bonds here. But we could be look. This could be the chart of anything. It could be the chart of the tooth toothpaste we talked about. It could be the chart of the car we talked about. It could be a forex market. It doesn't matter. Make sense? All right. Um, sounds good. All right, good. So um, go. Uh, there we go. So there's my email address. I know we're, we kind of ran out of time, but I wanted to make sure that you really understand that. If you're struggling to see these levels, you can always send me an email and maybe include a chart in it, and I'll try to help if I can. All right. And uh, we've got more sessions coming up here at uh, FX Street and, of course, Online Trading Academy. Uh, but there's my email address. So send me, if, you're, if you're not where you want to be or um, – uh, you know, or finding a challenge, I'll, I'll, I'll hope if I can. All right, great to be with you, and we'll see you next time.